We are live with the community. This is the December 2023 Power Platform Community Call. Where has the year gone? Oh my goodness, we are getting ever closer to 2024, but we're not there yet. We got some exciting stuff to talk about before we get there. So let's look at our agenda. Today, we're going to talk about some community resources. We're going to take a look at some community samples, talk about a cool new opportunity that's coming up in 2024 for all of you. We're going to have our group picture time with Together Mode, and then we're going to see three amazing all-star presenters of the day. Craig White is here. He's going to start with patch multiple rows in a power apps like a jedi so who's excited for that i think we all are we need a little bit of the force robin is here using power apps chat gpt and json to generate bedtime stories and more and then chris is going to be here building live with copilot at what ludicrous speed that's right so all those baseball fans get ready but first, let's talk about some resources that are available to each and every one of you. We've got a number of video channels that you can come and learn all kinds of things about Power Platform and the community. Subscribe today and you'll be alerted for all the calls, all the videos, and all the great things that you can learn more about. We've got a LinkedIn group for discussions and updates, so check that out at AK. Uh, ms slash community slash li we've got a number of open source tooling that you can take advantage of we've got a number of sample galleries power platform samples power platform prompts we'll hear a little bit more about those today and a special opportunity coming up in 2024 but you don't got to remember all these links all you got to do remember one of them ak.ms slash community slash home will take you and give you access to all these wonderful resources which are a hundred percent free so don't hesitate and as you're watching today, you may think, these are awesome presentations. I, I got some cool stuff I want to show off. Guess what? We welcome you, and we want you to show it off. So all you got to do, go to aka.ms slash community slash request slash demo. I know, rolls right off the tongue, right? Don't worry about it. I got a link in the chat for you. So go fill that form out. We will get back to you and get you scheduled on any one of the many community calls that are available to you. And if you've never presented, don't overthink it, folks. It doesn't need to be a flux capacitor that shows how to make time travel possible. It can be a feature. It can be a favorite technique. It can be a tip, a trick. Don't hesitate. And if you've never presented, just let us know. We'll buddy you up with someone that's already a well-established presenter. You'll work on it together. You'll present together. It'll be amazing. So don't hesitate. Fill it in. Now, starting in 2024, we're going to be adding a new co-host, but it's a little bit of a mystery. So you've got to be here on January 17th, 2024 to find out who this mystery person is. Silhouette might be given a little bit away, but uh, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. But you got to be here. 2024, new co-host to the call. We're going to be joining in and inviting in to help us run the community call. So we're excited for that. Now, let's talk about some samples and badges. We're going to begin with some Power Platform prompts, and we're going to invite April Dunham to tell us more. Yeah, thank you, David. So in case you all haven't heard the news, GPT prompts for AI Builder just went generally available in the U.S., Australia, the UK, and Europe as of yesterday. So what does that mean? That means that now is your opportunity if you haven't already to try out the features and start building some prompts. And if you're building these prompts and you're using them, then why not share them with the community? And that's exactly why we have the Power Platform Prompt Library here. So these are for prompts to use in AI Builder, but also the different co-pilots we have. So whether you're using Power Apps, Power Automate Copilot, uh, should remove Power Virtual Agents and say Microsoft Copilot Studio now on there. Um, so any of the prompts that you're using, we wanna see them in the Revo and we have an opportunity in starting in the new year to earn a special badge for sharing your prompts with the community. So if any of you want to join us and be a prompt pioneer, there may be a new badge coming in the new year. So be on the lookout for that. And we would love to see your prompts in the repo so that everyone can benefit from them and use them in the Power Platform. Back to you, David. Boom. Thank you, April. Look at that. I mean, that was like Copilot just striking out Power Virtual Agents. How amazing is that? Wasn't uh, anybody behind the curtain at all. So very, very cool. <laughs> and we've got a prompt manager, actually. Tell us a little bit more about that, April. Uh, yeah, so prompt manager, if you, so we have uh, prompts inside of AI Builder, so we can have our own prompts within our company. But if you want something a little bit more specialized to be able to store the prompts you're using across all of the tools, whether it's Microsoft 365, Copilot, even ChatGPT, whatever tool you're using AI related, you could have your own custom prompt manager application. So I've developed a template inside of Power App so you can go and install inside of your environment. You can tag your prompts by categories or by 
the product that they are. You can have a bookmark of your favorite prompts that you use all the time to quickly copy and paste into your tools. So it's just a really good solution to show the power of the Power Platform, what you can do with Power Apps. I actually built this using Copilot and customize it. So a lot you can do here to manage your prompts. So check it out if you need something to help start managing and collecting all the prompts that you're coming up with. Awesome. Thank you, April. And if you're looking for some guidance on how to utilize all those things, we have some changes coming up in the new year as well for Sharing is Caring. We're going to be starting up office hours. What this is going to allow you to do is kind of drop in when it's convenient for you during those office hours and ask questions around things like, hey, I'm, I understand how to contribute. I understand how to utilize, but I just need a little help on this. We are also going to still be providing our live sessions, which are safe space opportunities for you to ask questions and learn how to do things like submit a pull request to GitHub so that you can contribute those prompts to everyone in the world or a Power App sample uh, or the variety of other opportunities there is to contribute. So bear with us. We appreciate your patience and we are excited for what we're going to be bringing in 2024. And of course, we want to recognize you for all the amazing work that you are doing, which is why our recognition program is here. It is powered by Credly. Uh, it is completely backed by the community for the community. It is absolutely free. There is still a little less than a couple of weeks left for you to go get those badges. So definitely go submit those samples or interact or, hey, just update a doc. That's okay too. You correct a spelling mistake or a grammar mistake, you're getting a badge. So opt in at ak.ms slash community slash recognition. And we will absolutely ensure that you are and your contributions are tracked and we'll get you those badges. So don't hesitate to get involved. All right. Now, we got some upcoming events for the new year as well that we are super excited about. One of those is the Microsoft 365 conference. There is a low code track here, everybody, that is going to be focusing on low code. So definitely take advantage of getting and uh, op the opportunity to go out to Florida. Maybe you combine it with a trip to Disney World or Universal and check out the conference. So it's going to be a lot of great stuff. We've also got Educon, a number of dates throughout 2024 that are available to you. So in Seattle, DC, and Dallas. So likely those are going to be near some and or many of you. So definitely take advantage. And then, oh boy, we're going to be our third Power Platform Conference in September in Vegas. So everyone loved this. It was epic. The keynote was off the charts. It is back in 2024 and open for registration. So definitely get involved early, get registered, get signed up, take advantage. It is a great opportunity to collaborate with the community. We've got a number of other upcoming events that are available to everyone. And you can actually see all of those and submit your event if you'd like at Community Days. So check it out at aka.ms slash Community Days. This is some of the events that are spinning up uh, in 2024 for us all around the globe. We are a global community, so we wanna make sure that we are recognizing everyone and the amazing work that you're all doing in the community to run these events. We know it's not easy, and there is a lot of hard work that goes into that. Well, what time is it? It is picture time, so get those fantastic cameras turned on for those fantastic faces. I got my hat back on for my, my big thoughts, big thinking cap, and we'll turn on together mode here, and we'll move that in. Fantastic. It's working today. Yay, teams. And let's get the, there we go. Got that ready. Move that over here. All right. We got a few more, a uh, few more rows. All right. I see them opening up. Give everybody just a couple more seconds. Couple more seconds, plenty of seats still, plenty of seats. All right, let me start at the recording. Three, two, one. All right, wave to the community, everybody. Woo, I don't put my hands up too. I'm covering Craig's face. My head's already big enough. Woo, all right, looking fantastic, looking great, everybody. All right, let's stop that, move that over here, get everything ready, and Let's move into our all-star presenters of the day. So we're gonna begin with Craig White. The topic, patch multiple rows in power apps like a Jedi. <sighs> Craig, the floor is yours. Thank you for the presentation. Is yes? Uh, oh yeah, cool. actually your mic's cutting out a little bit. Say, say that again. Okay, can you hear us better now? Yeah, yeah, that's better now. All right, cool. Fingers crossed that everything works as expected. Okay, hope you can see my screen. We're going to talk today about patching multiple rows in Power Apps. This is quite a common requirement, something I've built for many, many times over the years. So I'm going to show you three really, really awesome techniques to do it today. Uh, just to kind of do a quick introduction, if you don't know who I am, I'm Craig. 
I'm a Power Platform Architect. I work for ANS in the UK, so I get the joy of working with Mr Huntingford on most days, which is absolutely epic. I've been quite active in the community this year over my blog and the forums and a few other bits and bobs. Uh, when I'm not working, when I'm not doing the community stuff, um, I'm taking silly pictures with my little one and I'm building very expensive Lego sets if you've not already gathered from my background. Cool. So what our scenario is today is we've got 100 questions and we want our users to uh, give us responses to each of those questions and then we're going to save those, those responses back to a data set. Uh, to a data source. We're going to use Dataverse for this one, but essentially you can use SharePoint, SQL, the techniques are exactly the same. We've generated a sample of 100 rows, um, and just as a quick tip, if you ever want to generate some quick fire data in your apps to kind of play around with, um, I tend to use a sequence function, so I'm going to use in sequence 100 because I want 100 rows of data, and then for all of those, I'm just going to add them to a collection and just map uh, an ID field and a couple of text fields, just so I've got a collection to play with. So these 100 rows are what we're going to be playing around with today. Before we get into the really good methods, I just wanted to highlight one of the perhaps the not so good methods. And the reason why I mentioned that is because this is probably one of the most common methods we see across uh, the forums and various chats. And that method is using for all, and within that for all, using the patch function. Now, this is probably quite good if you've got a couple of rows to manage, but if you've got lots of rows to manage, such as 100, this can take quite uh, a lot of time. It's quite an expensive operation because essentially for every row in that collection, we are going to patch our data source and make a new row each time. And the easiest way to see this in action is to look at the behavior. So let's run that initial uh, bit of code. And we can see that that for rule and patch is creating a new row each time. We can see the numbers are slowly going up because it's iterating through as a loop. And if we've got lots of information, is that the best user experience? Well, maybe not. That took 14 seconds to put that payload back to our Dataverse table. That might not be great. And again, you could probably use this methodology for a couple of rows, but if you want to scale your data up in future iterations of your app, you want to make sure it's performant. So how can we get that 14 seconds down to something a bit more sensible? Let's have a look at technique number one. And this one is very, very simple. All we're going to do is swap around the patch and the for all. For all is used quite a lot in a, a loop iteration, like we've just done with that previous example, but we can actually use for all to build a table of data that we want to process. You'll notice that this time the patch is on the outside, this is our parent object, therefore it's going to send that whole payload as a batch rather than doing it one row at a time. Just that little tweak, let's see how quick that takes. One second. Is that better? I think so, right? 14 seconds down to one second, that's going to be a lot of value for our users to process those um, records in a batch rather than one at a time. So that's method number one. Method number two, uh, a very common method. I think this has been blocked about quite a few times in the community by lots of different experts uh, who know way more than I do. But essentially, what we're going to do is build a collection that matches the schema of the table that we want to write our information back to. And when they can use a slightly different method of patch that you might be used to, to then process that collection again in a batch. And this is how it works. So firstly, we want to identify the table we want to write our data back to. So this is my Dataverse table, schema match examples. And I want to build an empty collection. I don't want any data in it. I just want to get the schema. There's lots of ways to build an empty collection. Uh, the two that I've most commonly used either filter by something that never will ever, ever, ever exist in your data source, so you're guaranteed to get that empty structure, or use first n and zeroth. Can you get the zeroth? Is that a word? I don't know. But essentially, we do not want to get any records. We just want to get the structure. Um, so that's our collection build. That's what's our replication of, of our table we want to send the data to. We then want to take our sample data in my scenario and map that to that collection that we've just built. Um, and again, we could just iterate through those 100 rows and just add that to that collection that we've just built. Now, bear in mind, if you're doing some schema matching and your source table has complex columns such as yes, no, lookups, choice columns, if you're mapping your data back to the collection you just built, you'll need to make sure that your values match the schema and the column types that your data source is going to be expecting to have. Once we've got that all set up and installed, our patch statement is very simply patch the table 
with the collection that we've just put all of our data in. Now, if you've been patching a few times, or if you're slightly newer to the Power Platform, you might have seen with patch, you'll have to specify defaults to add a new row, or you might need ID equals ID to update existing rows. You'll notice that neither of those are here in this technique. That's because with the schema match, it automatically recognizes new items that need to be created and automatically recognizes existing items that need to be edited, which is really cool. And you can repurpose this bit of code if you want to edit data in the future. So we could build the same collection with a reference that does return some data, make the changes in our collection, and then again, use the same piece of code to patch back those edits in bulk. And again, this is a really, really quick method. If you run the code for that, naught seconds. Again, that's a lot better than the 15 seconds we had right at the beginning. So that's really cool. Two really, really rapid methods. Now, both of those methods you're probably quite familiar with in this kind of structure. I use the best load code tool on the planet to demonstrate this, Microsoft Excel. This is what we're using for this image here, typical rows and columns. Everyone's kind of used that data structure, been using it for years. It's very, 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 very common. What if I told you I could put all 100 rows of those data, of that data, and the four columns in a single cell in a single row? Maybe not so much for, of a common example that people might have been used to. This is not a known as a no SQL approach to data. It's not using relational tables. It's not using relational data, semi or non structured data. We can basically just put as a massive text object into a multiple line of text column in our data source. So for this, we can effectively use two functions in Power Apps. We can use JSON to convert our rows and columns in our sample data into one big text object. And then we want to bring that data back into our app so we can edit it. We can use the parse JSON function, uh, which went into GA two months ago, I think, which was brilliant for me because I can finally actually use this uh, method with, with some confidence. And I'm sure you can too, if you like this method. Let's have a look at the code. Let's see what it looks like. So it's kind of a bit of a hybrid between the schema approach, um, but essentially, what I'm looking at here is to build a collection uh, with one row of data, not 100. And we are effectively taking that collection that we are using for our sample data and converting it to JSON. So it's going to be one big lump of text output. We are using this optional parameter in the JSON function just to format it to make it look a bit nicer. And we'll see that in a minute. And then again, we're going to patch that single row back to our table. And this method, again, is super, super rapid. This is the output here. We've got one row in our data source. This is a multiple line of text column where the JSON saved. And as we can see, we've got all 100 records that's just put right into that single cell in our single row. Lovely job. We want to get that data back into edit. OK, how do we do that? That's where the pass JSON function uh, comes into its own. So a quick run through of that. Um, the pass JSON function essentially is going to iterate over that massive JSON payload we just stuck in that single cell and rebuild the collection of sample data that we've just been working with. So as an example, that's our single cell. This is our now our typical tabular structure that we're used to. So let's make a couple of edits. So we can go PPCT demo, um, stick in a couple of emojis. Um, we can always see my emoji history, so let's not go there, but let's put in some beer and a rocket. And this button here is going to convert that collection again back to JSON update this existing row on the left, and then this constant loop will just keep happening for that 100 rows of data. So here we can see that change is now stored as JSON. We can then load that back into our collection, and we can continue doing those loops over and over again. A really, really rapid way to save multiple rows of data. Obviously, you might be sitting there thinking, going, well, what method do I use now? What's right for me? Um, I won't gloss on this for too long, other than to say that it depends. I'm a typical consultant, um, but essentially you need to kind of look at what your requirements are. What's your reporting? Do you need to have relational data or can you work with semi-structured? Storage requirements, obviously are you looking at line by line or can you store everything in a single row? There's lots of different things that you might need to contemplate before you decide which method to use. But the purpose of today was just to show you three really fast methods that you can potentially use in your existing or your future apps to save multiple records really, really fast from your Power Apps. Um, and that's it. Um, thank you for listening. Um, we, I think we'll drop a link in the chat for a blog and a sample app you can download if you kind of want to digest any of those techniques in your own time. And yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you very much.
Do we? I mean, I think everybody wants you, Craig. Excellent job. <laughs> and I love how you're using it all within Power Apps to show Power Apps, right? It's like Apception. So super, super cool. Uh, definitely <laughs> the force is strong with that app. See, what, see what <laughs> no, no crickets. All right, all right, let's move on, everybody. Robin is here to show us how to use Power Apps, ChatGPT, and JSON to generate the time, stories, and more. Robin, take it away. I actually have to unmute myself. Uh, perfect. Thank you, David, and thank you, Greg. Awesome demonstration, the formula that I uh, love to use and, and the JSON part in the end matches perfectly to uh, to the next part, to what I'm going to tell you, um, because we're going to talk about Power Platform, JetGPT, and JSON, and also a little bit about the past JSON function in Power Apps and Power Automate. So we're all warmed up for that. So first of all, a few words about me. I'm Robin. I'm a low-code enabler at NBW, which is a Southern German energy company you have probably never heard about. Um, I still have no clue about AI, what doesn't mean um, that I can't talk about it or use it in my apps because it's so easy in Power Apps to, to do that. This is my Twitter handle and I also have a small YouTube channel you can check out if you want to learn more about those topics or some front end considerations in Power Apps, Canvas Apps. I also am a Biz Apps MVP since the beginning of this year. And just as Greg, no, we didn't talk about it before. I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, yeah, we start with pictures of our kids. So this is my son. And uh, like you saw in the subtitle and the title, uh, we're going to uh, do a Bedtime Stories app. And the Bedtime Stories app is for Pete, my son. This was the moment that he got infected. Um, let's see what that makes with him in the coming years. He likes running around, telling me that he's awake at 5 a.m. I think Craig can relate there. Um, screaming, fighting with his sister. He also tells me from time to time that I'm sweet, what is really sweet. And he loves a good bedtime story every night. But there is a problem. He doesn't only like one bedtime story. When uh, the first bedtime story that I came up with is over, he goes like this. Another one, another one, another one, another one. And then my creativity comes to an end and this is where technology has to kick in. And that is where I built this solution for the, you might uh, have seen this before because Daniel Laskowitz and me, uh, we presented this as well at the Power Platform AI Hackathon. And uh, this is the solution that I came up with. So a quick video, how that works. First of all, you can create a hero for your bedtime story. Today's hero will be based on Christmas. So we get Jolly Jingle, the head elf of the North Pole of Santa's workshop. And then we can select this, uh, the hero and create a fresh new story. And in a few seconds, this works on my mobile phone. And I actually use this app um, every second night to tell him some bad night stories when I bring him to bed. Uh, but we want to take one step back. And today I actually want to talk about the hero creation process, because all of that is done with one single prompt. But normally when you type something into ChatGPT, you get a string out. So this is normally what we see when we type something into ChatGPT. So this is um, basically the prompt a little bit different that I used um, in, the, in the Canvas app. And then we get an answer that looks like this. All the information that you just saw on the Canvas app screen is somewhere in there, but not in a structured way. So how can we get the things out of this text and put it uh, in a structured way on our Canvas screen or store the hero then what I did afterwards, I stored in Dataverse. So store the hero then in Dataverse. How does that work? And we, we saw the video that was in real time. So it's actually really, really fast. It's just one call to the ChatGPT API. 
So what is the twist? Of course, you can read, and I already talked about it. Craig already talked about it. We take the same prompt, and then we add one little sentence. Answer as a JSON object. ChatGPT speaks so many languages. It speaks so many programming languages. It even speaks emoji if you want to. So of course, this thing can talk in JSON as well. And the answer that we get here is something like this. And then, of course, it's much, much easier to get this on a Canvas Apps screen in a structured way. And let's look really quickly at the Power Apps code. Um, what is really, really important if you use that as well, provide a sample object so it gets predictable which attributes, which properties we have in this object. So I tell it, uh, up here, what I want from it. And then again, I reinforce it by, I want the name, I want the home, which, uh, and I want the age. This is an integer because there are no, uh, no double quotes around it. And then I don't want this. Um, this is the markdown that is used that we have those nice code blocks in ChatGPT. I don't want that from the API, so I tell it to them. And then we can, just as Greg showed us, we can use the parse JSON function in here, and we can be sure that there's a name, uh, a name property in there because we specifically asked for it. And that works like 99% of the time really, really well. Um, in the beginning, I was uh, saying we will add some business value. So the bedtime stories for me, it's a lot of business value because it makes my evenings easier and my son happy. But uh, let's get to another example. And this time we're going to do it in a live demo. Where is the business value? Demo time. So who is the busiest man right now on the planet? Probably... Santa Claus. And Santa Claus gets a lot of wish lists at the moment and all are in different formats. And of course, we need to have itemized lists for different reasons. Because um, first of all, I'm the reindeer in here and Rudolph can't pull everything. So you can't overload the sled. Also, inflation really kicked in over the last year. So we have to look at the budget a little bit. Um, so we need to have an idea what all those items cost and how big they are. So the yeah, so we can pack everything in the sleigh and then the logistics to bring everything to the different countries. And I got a hold of Craig's Christmas wish list. Um, and we will put that in the forms in here. So Craig White from somewhere around Manchester, I don't actually know, um, in the UK and his Christmas wish list consists of Lego, Formula One and Ben and Jerry's ice cream. So while we submit this and wait till it's processed, we're going to look really quickly at the flow, how everything is built. So we just triggered everything when a new response is submitted. Everyone who worked with forms in Power Automate already knows. Second step, we have to get the actual response details where all the strings that we just saw are included. And then we store everything in Dataverse. So we make a new contact, which is Craig White right now uh, from Manchester, UK. And then the magic happens. This is where we use ChatGPT in here. And this is the prompt. Looks a little bit different in the in the new editor than in Canvas apps, but basically the same. I am strictly telling you, it's an API that just answers in JSON. And down here is again the JSON object that I want to have. And right now I want an itemized list. So I want an array of items of the wish list. Again, here's an example just how I want it. And of course, in Power Automate for much longer, we had the parse JSON functionality. We're going to use uh, here again in for uh, for me, it's much easier actually in Power Automate to work with the past JSON object. It's uh, yeah much more straightforward. And then for every wish list item, we just bring everything into Dataverse, and let's see if that worked. Of course, Santa has its own model-driven app, and we see Craig White in here, and 
this information, so which category it falls into, if there is uh, more or less educational value, the estimated price, size, and weight. This is all from the LLM. So JetGPT made an estimate in here that wasn't in the uh, in the wish list itself, but we can then look here and Santa can decide which present he will bring to Greg if he was uh, a nice kid last year and which he doesn't, of course, also looking at the budget and the weight of the items. Um, yeah, and that was my second demo. Of course, probably you are not Santa Claus, so not that much business value for you, but you hope you can transfer that. I but I hope you can transfer that knowledge to your own apps. For example, the Power Automate stuff. If you get a customer service email or just email from, from a customer and you need to extract data from there or to automatically write it to a database, this is the functionality to use. And this is not something that I came up with, but uh, many, many people do that kind of stuff with the JetGPT and the other LLMs, I think under the hood in Copilot, this stuff is used all the time. So bring it to your apps and flows as well. Um, quickly, the links, uh, what I wanted to talk about for my last slide is if you like the design of the, um, of the bedtime stories app, Louise and me, we made a design toolkit. You can find it in the in the first link. The second one is if you want to get started with JetGPT in Power Apps, Canvas Apps. Um, I made a recording with April and Jocelyn. Um, you can look that up in here. And as I told earlier, I did a recording with Daniel about Azure OpenAI. So of course you can also use that inside your Canvas Apps and Flows. And you can actually also download the whole Bedtime Stories app. And if you want to send in a wish list, I will paste that link in the chat in a second. So you can send me a wish list and I can do some picture updates. And yeah, and with that, I come to an end of my presentation. And David also reached in, uh, reached out with a wish list to Santa Claus. David, is this your wish list? Movies? <laughs> Ice hockey? Wait. Now I know games. why you asked uh, some interests. Yes, I like all those things. That is very, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> AI has been uh, stalking me, I guess. Yes. <laughs> very, very cool. Excellent. Thank you, Robin. And so also, everybody, just think about like uh, the practical applications of this is very, very valuable when you think about like team building. So get creative with what Robin is showing off because you absolutely could utilize this in a corporate environment. You could get to know each, uh, each other on your team a little bit better by doing some of these fun things that provide a little bit more chemistry. And then guess what? You're going to work better together as you start building software and solutions. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good opportunity to learn as well. So thank you, Robin, for sharing that great, great job to everybody involved. All right. Well, our final presenter of the day is here, Chris Huntingford, building live with Copilot at ludicrous speed. Chris Huntingford, go! What is up? Can you guys hear me okay? We can. Magical, magical, magical. All righty. Let's have a bit of fun. Let me move Money David there. And can you see my screen? Affirmative. You got it. Magical. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna chat a little bit about building your own uh, custom co-pilots, which is really what uh, what I've been focusing on in the last kind of few months. It's it's getting it's getting pretty real actually. But um anyway, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Chris. I have the honor and privilege of working with folks like Sharon Smith and Craig White, John Russell. They're all on the call, and good old Keith Atherton. And yeah, I work at ANS. I'm the director of innovation. So basically, I run around telling everyone that AI is far more important than oxygen right now. And today we're going to build some custom co-pilots, but I want to tell you a little bit of a story, right? Because I think this is pretty important. You know, a lot of folks don't actually have tools like Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365. Yes, that is the name that it actually is called, brought to you by the same people that named something Teams Teams. Anyway, as we move on and progress, when starting to look at what Microsoft are doing with AI and um, with Copilot in particular, there are three core pillars that you need to start thinking about, okay? Now, those of you on the call are low-code geniuses, right? So congratulations, um, you're also going to be responsible for the extending and building co-pilots using low-code. 
okay? And uh, you can put that on LinkedIn, do whatever you'd like with it, but this is really important, right? So the three pillars for loco, so for AI or Copilot right now are adoption, so it's actually driving people to start using Copilot and um and, and actually bring it towards, you know, people in your organizations. So really like getting it, you know, wide, more widely spread. Extending using Copilot. So you can actually extend Microsoft 365 using Copilot Studio and then building your own custom Copilots, which is super exciting. Okay. So today we're going to focus primarily on the build bit. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. But as um as Dave previously mentioned, uh, very important to know that the artist formerly known as Power Virtual Agents, which I still think they should have called PowerBots, by the way, uh, was is now Copilot Studios. Okay, so this is a real Copilot Studio. It's really important to understand that. So if you have been using tools like Power Virtual Agent, congratulations, you are a Copilot builder, okay, which is very cool. Isn't that awesome? And obviously, this plugs into the rest of the uh, the load code stack and obviously Azure as well as, micro as, well as Microsoft Office. So today we'll be taking a look at Copilot Studio. I have no idea why there's a little six there. <laughs> That's random, but we'll just roll with it as we go. Now, I want to tell you a little bit of a story. I don't know how many of you think that there's life on other planets, but uh, there might or there might not be. And that is a thing called the Fermi paradox. Okay, and we will talk about this in a bit more detail. But I study a thing called planetary sciences at a university called Birkbeck. Okay, and one of the subjects that I get to focus on is called astrobiology okay and it is a very exciting subject and it talks about you know is there life on other planets what is the propensity for life on other planets what are the building bricks for life and, and, and all sorts of interesting things but I'll, i want to show you something a little bit crazy right so check this out if i go to desktop and i show you my lectures okay so there's a lot of lectures there's around 11 actual lectures and each lecture has got a ton of information in it right so if you have a look there is loads of information in each lecture, okay? And it's really hard to kind of reason over a lot of this information, all right? I mean, look at this, pre-biological chemical evolution and the origin of life. So like, where did everything start out? And when we write our exams, there are open book exams, but we do, we are allowed to have our lecture notes open, but it's really, really hard to kind of reason across all that data. It's really not easy, okay? So as you can see, there's a lot of information to consume. So I thought, well, you know what? Why don't I build something that will help me reason over this data? And I thought, actually, a really cool thing to build is going to be a copilot. So I created my own copilot that helps me rationalize and reason over the information that I have to read all the time. So let me show you what I did, right? First things first, I have a very, very, very awesome SharePoint site that I built. Okay. And as you can see, it's a load of astrobiology stuff in here, right? Now, this is still kind of getting started. I have, I have to add a bunch of things. I used one of the templates. And as you can see, I've uploaded all of my documentation, okay? But it's still really difficult to find information, and it's really difficult to rationalize over all of this stuff. So what did I do? Okay, so first things first, I'm going to create a custom copilot to help me manage this. So if you go to make.powerapps.com, okay, you can do this on your site at some point. And you click on chatbots, so you'll probably find it in more. Open up chatbots over here. I'm going to create a new copilot, okay, a brand spanking new one. So let's take a look, right? What I'm going to do is it's asking me, I'll call this um, auto bot for astro biology. Cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. Sorry, the little uh, goodies in the way. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go put in my SharePoint site URL, okay? Now, what's cool is I don't actually need to put in the document link. I can just simply use this, this URL over here, okay? And a lot of people are thinking, hey, you know, how, how is this going to help you? Ooh, I can't spell either. Let me do that. Wow. Cool. So let me pop the site in there, and I'm going to go ahead and build my own copilot. So that's going to kick off. It's going to do its thing, and it's going to really make it a lot easier for me to kind of reason over that information inside that SharePoint list, okay, in that document library. So as you can see, it's built the bot for me already. If I go to generative AI over there, you'll actually see that my SharePoint site is available. The other thing is that I could point this at multiple sites, which is quite cool. So if you've got lots of places with information, you can kind of point it over there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to publish this. And what it'll allow me to do is once it's been published, I'll be able to use this in um, you know, a copilot. I'll be able to publish this inside an app or Microsoft Teams or extend it into Microsoft 365 Copilot, which is really very cool, okay? While it's doing that, there's a couple of other things that you need to know. Because this information is internal, all right, 
your security will be set to internal. This will not be available to people externally. Okay, that's a very important thing. So in settings, if you go to security over here, what you will notice is that in authentication, it is going to be set for only, only for Teams and Power Apps. That is important. If you set it to no authentication, you will get an, an, an authorization error straight off the bat. So don't think um, for a second that that will work because if you publish this externally, it will look at internal data. So that's really important. We learned the lesson the hard way. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I've got my little thing over there. I'm going to go and ask it for something. I'm going to go get a prompt. So I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the um, Arecibo message. It was a radio signal that was sent into space. I'm going to ask it, tell me about the Arecibo message. All right. And what it's going to do is it's going to go and look inside that document library and find the lecture with that information in it and give me a summary, which is really very exciting, right? So like I don't have to bother around digging around. There we go, lecture 11. The Arecibo message was transmitted in 1974, okay? I'll pop open my lecture notes and there it is. That's the actual pictorial version of the message. Okay, that's very, very cool. So I'm kind of halfway there, right? This is all exciting, but actually I wanna be able to have access to this Copilot directly in that channel. Now I can either publish it to Teams or publish it to Power Apps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this little dude over there. We're gonna to go to Power Apps over there and we're gonna go hit new app. Once we've done that, we will go and, whoops, let's go create a blank app, blank Canvas app. We'll call this Copilot V2. Ooh, apparently I've got one. V56, there we go, we can't go wrong there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to publish this Copilot up to an application. So if you go in here, there are two versions of this. You have got your Copilot preview over there, which you can point at structured data. I'm going to go and look for bot, chatbot preview, pop it in there, and we will hopefully find our Copilot. There we go. I'll just pick that one there, AstroBot test one. I'll make it full screen. I'm going to save it. Give us a little publish. Come on. Why we're not publishing. There we go. Cool. Fantastic. And what will happen if I shoot back to my SharePoint site? Ooh, just decided to move. Let's get back there. If I shoot back to my SharePoint site, I'll go into edit mode. I'll straight away just pop a little uh, tile under here. Let's put it over there. Power apps. Let's get out of there. I'll just use this one here. Details. Copy link. Just make sure. Whoops. Come on. And we will simply we will simply chuck it into the SharePoint site over there. Bam. Fantastic. Let it do its thing. We will republish. And voila. I have a live copilot embedded in the Power App, embedded in the SharePoint site that I can actually talk to, which is pretty cool. So if I go in here and say, again, uh, copy the Arecibo message, copy, bam, control B, pop it in there, same thing, right? So it's an actual live copilot embedded in a page that I can go and use to reason over my data. And I've done that in not even 10 minutes, okay? Now, there's something that's very important for you to understand here is that anyone, there it is, there's the Arecibo message, I'll pop open my lecture notes, and there's the info. I don't have to read thousands and thousands of pieces of information that I don't think are relevant. Now, here's the crazy part, okay? Imagine your organization and you have an HR file structure, and you wanna, get re you wanna reason over that HR file structure by saying, hey, tell me, tell me how I take leave, or tell me how I register X, Y, and Z. You could do that in literally five minutes. We worked with a company recently we actually published this, um, not, not internal information, but they, they reasoned over their data, they reasoned over their website. They built something in five minutes that they had previously paid 75,000 pounds for, okay? It is crazy how fast you can create things. So there's a couple of things that I want you all to know, right? Inside here, inside your actual AI or generative AI studio, okay, you have a lot of functionality. You can upload websites, whoops, you can upload websites, you can upload, uh, you can physically upload documentation. The really cool thing is you also have got different languages that you can add in, okay? So you can actually turn on different languages. I tried this with Polish recently and it worked beautifully, okay? So I had a Polish document, so I uploaded it and we were asking it questions in Polish. It worked absolutely brilliantly, right? So the crazy thing here is that this is far more than a bot. 
This is actually a really, really rational engine that allows you to understand and reason over data really quickly. Okay. Remember that I said to you that inside Microsoft, inside Copilot Studio, you have the ability to extend Microsoft 365 Copilot. Well, here's something crazy, right? First of all, if you understand low code, which you all do, that's why you're on the call. If you understand low code, I would like to say congratulations, massive congratulations, everyone. You are now AI extensibility experts, okay? Go and put it on LinkedIn. Do whatever you want. Ask your boss for a raise. But you are all now officially AI extensibility experts. Your skills right now as Copilot for Microsoft 365 is released are going to be so, so vital, okay? And that was a very simple example of what I could do with Copilot Studio over a big chunk of data that would normally have taken me a lot of time to understand. So what I've also done is I've chucked some links in here. Hopefully, they'll help you out. Um, it's taken me a little while to kind of figure out the use cases and learn and things like that, but I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed kind of going through the process of building out my own co-pilots. And actually, I've done loads now, right? So I can't stop. <laughs> but it's great because it's immediate value. And in your organization, you simply turn it on, go and create one, and then publish it. If you really want to, you can even publish it externally with specific pieces of data, not internal data. And it's, it's official, right? Like AI extensibility is low code. So again, congratulations, everyone, all of you AI extensibility experts in the room. Um, it's really good to be around you. And thank you very much for listening to me waffle about building co-pilots. Awesome, Chris. Really, really great stuff. I think, uh, I think if you call it Autobot and then you yeah. deploy it, we've got to do the whole like sound effect like Autobot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got to get the transformer stuff going on. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. All right, everybody, let's wrap this call up. Thank you so much to our fantastic presenters of the day, uh, Craig, Robin, and Chris. You always bring it to the community, and thank you for uh, taking time. I know it's that time of year where we're busy with family and taking time off, so thank you for spending some of your time off. I know some of you on the call are doing that, so just want to say thank you and say that we appreciate you supporting the community. You've got some resources that are available to you if you are new to the community. We've got a Power Platform community front door that you can take advantage of. Uh, we've got videos and samples, dedicated community sites for question and answer across all of the uh, platform or excuse me, products in the platform. So please, please, please don't hesitate to take advantage of some of those things. Uh, if you are enjoying this community call, which we hope you are because you're here, we've got plenty more for you. Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Microsoft only speakers call is every Tuesday, but it is on a holiday break until the 8th of January. So come back on the 9th of January and definitely check those out. We are working with some uh, product managers and program managers to get some cool things in store for you. Of course, you are on the Power Platform monthly call. We've got an office add-ins call. And then we've got our bi-weekly sibling calls, which mean that every Thursday there is a call, 7 a.m. Pacific, Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community, Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework. For the next two weeks, we are going to have a coffee and tea opportunity. So there's no demos, but uh, starting tomorrow on that call for the next couple of weeks, if you just want to chat or hang out, we will be there for you, drinking some coffee and tea or whatever you like. Definitely check all these out, aka.ms slash community slash calls. We have also set up a Discord server. Uh, we want to be like the cool kids, of course. So check that out. We have gotten over a thousand community members in there now. So it's kind of a great opportunity. If you're not familiar with Discord, uh, it is much like a central repository for all kinds of pr uh, things to talk about. So a lot of different themes and topics all wrapped up into one location. Of course, it's used for gaming and amongst many other uses. Uh, many organizations and corporations have a Discord server now as well. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. That's a great way to collaborate and uh, communicate. We would also like to know your feedback. So let us know. You've, uh, many of you have filled this in, and we appreciate it. Uh, feel free to keep filling in. Let us know if we're still doing things right or if there's other things you'd like to see us do more of. Please let us know. It lets our management know on a statistics side that we are succeeding with this, and you have find value in these calls. So we really appreciate all the feedback that you provide. Other than that, the recording will be available in 24 hours on the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community YouTube channel. Go to ak.ms slash community slash videos. Subscribe to all of the YouTube channels because that's the only and quickest way you're going to find out about the, the videos. You're going to see in the chat, the video is ready for you, but it's actually lying to you unless you're an FTE. You're going to not be able to download it. And it'll just end up in sadness, but we want you to be happy. So go subscribe and you'll be alerted as soon as it drops. We'll let you know and we get it out within 24 hours. You can also follow us on Twitter or X or whatever we're going to call it today. Updates at M365 or M365 PNP. And of course, you can check out the LinkedIn community. 
Be back on January 17th for that surprise mystery announcement. And we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Have a wonderful rest of your year. Thank you all so much for all that you're doing in the community. This would not be possible without all of the passion that you all bring every single day. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for all that you're doing. Have a wonderful rest of the year. Take some time to enjoy family uh, and get recharged because it's going to be a great 2024. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.